Do you want to know my secret, Agent Romanoff? You want to know how I stay calm? To be honest with you, I, I wasn't able to watch this uh, ever before. <laughs> I kind of remember seeing this and just being like, oh, <laughs> down in my seat. Hi, I'm Mark Ruffalo, and I'm going to rewatch some scenes uh, throughout my career. Here we go. Oh no, again. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know these moves. I haven't done this. What are you, crazy? As much as she is dragging me onto that dance floor, which was as much as she was actually dragging me on that dance floor. I did not know how to do this dance. <laughs> I had such a hard time with it. <laughs> Took her 60 minutes to learn this, and it took me like four days. Oh God, it's such a time. Jenna, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. What are you? I'm sorry. Wait, don't. What a time this was. This is sort of the beginning of, of, of everything in a way. You know, Gary Winnick, who directed this, is just was one of the great uh, independent um, directors, and he decided he was gonna cross over and do this, um, this romantic comedy and make it like an independent movie, like have all that heart and soul and thoughtfulness and try to have it have a message while still being romantic. You know, it's romantic comedy, but it really is about innocence and keeping your innocence and losing your innocence and how we rush into that as young people. I just think that that resonates with everybody. There's all, everyone know, remembers the moment where they lost their innocence and or, or they wish they'd still had it. It's unrequited love, you know, it's the ending that you don't want to see in a romantic comedy and then you get the ending you wanted to see. Having that switch up, I think made, made it really special too. Better. What? <laughs> Why I keep it in my mouth if it is revolting? Duncan Wedderburn, he's, he's, in, he's in a great tradition of the rake, the English rake. Uh, Terry Thomas is one of the um, people who come to mind. A lot of it is in the dialogue. Uh, this, he's controlling, he's, he sees himself as a libertine. He believes in free love unless, of course, it's the woman who wants to have free love. A classic sort of misogynistic, you know, uh, sexually dominating man from the turn of the century, even to today. Andrew Tate comes to mind. I must go punch that baby. <laughs> That baby was really crying a lot. I don't think it was hard for Emma to, to, to build up those um, feelings of anger. Your behavior is unconscionable. We behave. She's just one of the greatest actors and so present. A lot of it is just responding to, to what she's giving you. When an actor's present with you, there's something happening in between the two of you. You are hurting, Bella. Sorry. Reason does not penetrate. Let us go. Ow. She really slapped me hard <laughs> at that time. What makes it so great is the mental process of, do I like that? <laughs> that was exhilarating. <laughs> I've never been slapped before. Who is this woman? Do I kiss her or bite her? His response is, ow. <laughs> <laughs> which has a little bit of the pleasure in it and is maybe wanting more, <laughs> let's say. His kink. What are you doing, Mr. Stark? Uh, kind of been wondering the same thing about you. You're supposed to be locating the Tesseract. We are. The model's locked and we're sweeping for the signature now. When we hit a hit... We'll I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I, <laughs> we get into the scientific jargon and I just like... Bah, 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 bah. All that was really uh, difficult for me, but I think we pull it... Oh, look at how great uh, Downey looks. 
Sorry, computer was moving a little slow for me. Rogers, we gathered everything related to the Tesseract. This does not mean I'm that we're I'm sorry, making... Nick. What, were you lying? I was wrong, Director. The world hasn't changed a bit. Did you know about this? Busted. I mean, you get a little twitchy. <laughs> I'd like to know why S.H.I.E.L.D. is using the Tesseract to build weapons of mass destruction. Because of him. Me. I was scared to death. All these other guys have had movies uh, made on their characters. I just felt like I had big shoes to fill with all of the other banners. You know, my friend Ed Norton was amazing. And then there's this big monologue coming. It was a tough monologue and it's and the language was, was difficult. And there's an energy in there that, that suits very well for where Banner is right now. You know, uh, do I fit in here? That was me. He has to prove himself to them here. And, and I had to, too. And that and that's frustrating, you know? And that has high stakes. You're on this set with those actors, and you had to come through, and Banner has to come through, and he has to take his place within this team. That's what's playing here. The odd thing is, we also got gloves. Suspects? There's blood on them. Hey, Pete? Yeah, Dave. Let's go over there. Can I get in there? I want to say it was three nights to, to, to film the sequence. My memory's faulty, but I, I know it was more than, than one night. If you were doing any other movie, you would do this sequence in half a day. But I remember this night specifically because Fincher had this idea where I come down the hill and it's like backlit. And it's the, a sort of an introduction to him as this kind of lone, you know, figure. And he explained the shot to me. And I'd never, you know, had been in a film where the director had planned a shot a certain way. We would do 60, 70 takes, you know, just out of hand. My first day, he, he was coming towards me. Uh, Jake and I had done a, um, it's like a four page walk and talk, lots of dialogue. He's coming towards me, Fincher, finally at take 30. And I'm just like, okay, I, I did my best. And he literally walks by me. He moves a, a background artist like two inches. And then he turns around, he walks, and hits me on the back and he walks back to the monitor. And I was like, oh, I'm only like 10% of the frame. This guy just moved a background artist two inches behind me. He wants this thing perfection in 100%, and I'm just 10% of it. Every movie you do, you're on a journey with a director, and the just more you can give in to them and join them on their process and their journey, the better it is for them, the better it is for you. For me, that's what this was from the very beginning. In this, you had to you had to know your dialogue. You had to know everything like you knew the back of your hand. And if you didn't with Fincher, you're in trouble. <laughs> I wonder if Father Gagan should not be reduced to just weekend work while receiving some kind of therapy. Mike Resendiz, uh, the guy I'm playing and just how much it costs these guys to, uh, to do this. And you know, they were all Catholics, and this is their world that they were exploding, and uh, it really took its toll on them emotionally. When did Gallant write her letter? 1984. And Law just ignored it. How do you ignore that freaking letter? We got him. Injustice is, you know, it's 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 a power that hurts people, and and that people don't really have recourse to or defenses against people being, their lives being turned upside down by fracking. And I was on those frontline communities where there really was no justice for people and they were being abused and the system wasn't protecting them the way it was supposed to. I'd had interactions that resembled that. So I really, I really knew that uh, in, a, in a personal way. It's time, Robbie, it's time. They knew, and they let it happen to kids, okay? It could have been you. It could have been me. It could have been any of us. 
We gotta nail these scumbags. We gotta show people that nobody can get away with this. Not a priest or a cardinal or a freaking pope. Well, the truth is, is that no matter how you want to hold yourself outside of it, I mean, personally, you, you, you got to be honest that it's, it is you. I mean, you're the one there. You're the one saying the lines. You're the one who's having, you know, showing up, who's, who's living this life. So I don't, I don't really separate them that much personally. You can't negate that you're there. I just feel like... Why, why even spend the energy doing that? There's a sickness in just, I think, just get, be, thinking you are becoming that character because that, all, that also isn't true. It's always a dance between, you know, yourself and the character and your own experiences and experiences that your character is going through. Thanks for watching.